find your weapon's FBX file in the file browser and drag and drop it into the hierarchy. Right click and unpack the prefab. You need to unpack the prefab in order to make any changes to the game object. Open the Patriot game object and duplicate the muzzle and casing particle objects. Drag the duplicates to be a child of your weapon body. The muzzle determines where the bullet will spawn from when firing, and the casing particle is the casing that's ejected every time the weapon fires. Move the muzzle object to the end of your weapon's barrel. Do not adjust the rotation of the muzzle, or your weapon's projectile may spawn incorrectly. You can open the muzzle object to assign a different muzzle flash particle effect if you have one. I'm not going to cover how to use the particle system since that's a very complex topic that's not from the scope of the series. I'll link to some tutorials that cover the basics of Unity's particle system in the description. Keep in mind, if you follow any Unity tutorial, you cannot make or use custom c -sharp scripts for your weapon mod. Those will not work for Ravenfield modding. Particles must use the Shuriken particle system and not VFX graph. For the casing particle, move it to where your weapon would normally eject casings. I've replaced the default model for the casing to use a more detailed model instead. If you happen to have a model you want to use, open the renderer tab and replace the mesh. Go back to your weapon object and click the circular icon next to the controller. Search for your weapon's animation controller you made earlier and assign it. Next, add a new weapon component. This will add an audio source to your gun to use for weapon firing sounds. Weapon audio will be covered in a future video. The weapon script is where all your weapon stat configurations will be. I've gotten permission from Rift to re-upload a PDF documenting the entire weapon script and what every parameter does. The document was made possible thanks to these helpful modders and members of the community. Click and drag your weapon's body model into the third person transform parameter. This parameter determines what model will be used for the AI and player when in spectator camera mode. If your weapon is fully automatic, enable the auto checkbox. Ammo is how many rounds are in the magazine. Spare ammo is how many bullets the player can bring for their reserve. Resupply number is how many bullets are restored when the player regains ammo by kicking a dead soldier, being next to an ammo box, or standing near a resupply crate. I try to make this number 2 or 3 magazines worth of ammo. Reload time is how long your reload animation takes to complete in seconds. To find the number, use a calculator to input the last frame of the reload animation, and subtract the first frame of the reload animation. Take that number and divide it by the frame rate you animated your weapon at. I animate at 30 FPS, so I divide the number by 30. That number is your reload time. Cooldown refers to how many shots per second your weapon mod fires. If you're using a real world weapon and want to convert its fire rate, take the RPM and divide the number by 60. For this video, I'm going with 800 RPM because that's the number that's in between the Google search results. After dividing by 60, divide 1 by the number you received. We've now converted your weapon fire rate from rounds per minute to rounds per second. If you want to balance your weapon around the vanilla weapon values, click on the AK or Patriot game object to compare the numbers. Unholster time is how long it takes to draw the weapon. Repeat the process we did for the reload time to convert the frames into seconds. Aim FOV is how much the camera will zoom in when you aim down sights. A lower FOV zooms the camera in more. The Patriot with its optic has an FOV of 30, but the RK iron sights has a value of 34. Loud refers to if your weapon is considered a stealth weapon or not. I recommend taking the Force World audio output checkbox. It's to make your weapon mod use the appropriate audio mixer and can help with immersion. Under Fire Data, make the muzzle count 1. Drag the muzzle game object inside your weapon body to that parameter. This is where the game will know to spawn your projectiles. For Casing Particle, also set that to 1 and assign your Casing Particle there. You must assign both of these or else you will receive an error message in game. The projectile prefab is the bullet that is spawned when the weapon fires. Click the circular icon to search and look for Tracer in the Assets tab. I'll be assigning the AR-15 Tracer for the purposes of this video. If you wanted to, you could duplicate the Tracer object with Ctrl-D and rename it to be unique to your weapon mod, and adjust the numbers along the side. To quickly cover what everything does, speed is how quickly your projectile moves in meters per second. 
Impact force is how much being hit by the bullet will push back the target. You can make the impact force a negative number to pull targets closer to the shooter instead. Lifetime is how long the projectile is active in seconds before it despawns. Damage is how much damage it deals. Balance damage is how much damage it does to the target's balance stat. If you're unfamiliar with balance, it's a hidden statistic in Rainfield that determines when you or bots get knocked down and ragdolled. Receiving 100 balance damage or more causes ragdolling. Impact decal size is how large the bullet hole texture will be when the projectile misses the target. Penetrate and piercing are to make the projectile pierce up to 2 meters through objects marked with pierceable tech. I'm not sure how many modders are aware of this mechanic, so enable it if you wish. Every weapon that narrowly misses the player plays a flyby sound. You can adjust the pitch here. Drop off end is how long the projectile can travel before it begins to drop. Gravity is how much of an effect gravity will drag the bullet down. Damage drop off is how the bullet's max damage will drop off after a certain distance. You can fine tune this graph by right clicking the point and choosing edit key. The time refers to the bullet's lifetime, while the value is how much damage it can deal. I got no clue what I'm here velocity does, and it's better to keep auto assigned armor damage off. Armor damage refers to what class of vehicle you can hurt with this projectile. Return to your weapon mod by clicking on the weapon game object. If you made a custom projectile, remember to assign it in the weapon configuration. AI allowed aim spread is how much recoil the AI will encounter when firing the weapon. Aim swing is how accurate the bots will be. Halt strategy is to make bots stand still when firing depending on the circumstances. The effectiveness dropdowns are for how effective the weapon is during specific scenarios. Effective range is how far the weapon can engage in meters before the bot will need to be closer or switch to a more effective weapon. If you want to make your weapon be burst fire, you can use the heat mechanic to do so. Enable the heat checkbox, divide 1 by the number of rounds you want to fire in a single burst, and make that number your heat gain. For example, if you want a 3 round burst, such as a FAMAS, make the heat gain 0.34. When the player holds the fire button, the weapon will only fire maximum 3 rounds, because firing more would cause heat to pass 1. Heat drain rate is how much the heat cools down in one second. If you're implementing advanced reloads, you need to set the advanced reload number to the same amount as your magazine size. Every entry in the elements should then be numbers from 1 to the max amount of bullets in the magazine. The easiest method of filling out all the entries is to type a number, then press tab on your keyboard to switch to the next entry. Once you're done typing the numbers, enable the advanced reload checkbox. Ignore the weapon audio section for now, as I'll cover that in a future video. In the UI sprite, click the circular icon and look for your weapon UI render we made. If you can't find it, make sure you follow the steps to convert your image into a sprite, or else it won't appear in the search. For the arms parameter, drag your first person hands model from the hierarchy into the parameter. Your mod won't be compatible with custom skin mods if you don't assign the hands. In the weapon configuration, there's a pose parameter that will let you change how AI will hold the weapon. Brainfield only has three poses you can select. Pose 0 is a default pose meant for rifles, and has the right hand hold the weapon grip while the left hand supports the barrel. Pose 1 is meant for handguns and smaller weapons. The hands are cupped together. Pose 2 is meant for anti-armor weapons like RPGs or smalls, or weapons that have a foregrip. Press the play button, and Unity should allow you to test your weapon. You can aim, shoot, reload, and sprint within Unity. While sprinting, it's still possible to shoot, but that's only in Unity and won't be an issue in-game. With Unity testing still active, switch to the scene window. Click on your weapon body held by the soldier model. In the hierarchy, look for the game object that says clone and select it. 
use the gizmo to move and adjust the weapon's position, so it looks like the soldier is holding the weapon. Once you're satisfied with how it looks, save the numbers and transform component. I use Windows Snip tool, but you can take a screenshot or even a picture with your phone. Click the play button again to end the weapon testing mode. In your weapon's third person configuration, enter the numbers you save for the transform. When you click play again, the weapon model should now be properly adjusted for the soldier. If you follow my double magazine tactical reload with a cube parent, you can safely remove the cube's renderer to hide it in-game. Exit testing mode and go to the mag parent object. Click on the three vertical dots and remove the mesh filter and mesh renderer components.